Hey chemistry family, we are introducing today some new conversion problems and right in front of you here is your new mole map is what we like to call it. What this is going to do is this map is going to allow you to make conversions going from maybe moles to the mass of something or maybe mass to moles or moles of an object to how much volume that gas might take up. By the way, volume has to be at what's called STP, which stands for Standard Temperature and Pressure. That is something we'll look more and further into later in the classroom, but for now, standard temperature and pressure just simply means that it's zero degrees Celsius and a standard temperature of uh, pressure that is of one atmosphere. All right, but remember, volume is in liters, mass is going to be in grams, and if for some reason you want to go from volume to moles, you can just follow your arrows. All right, and if you want to go from moles to particles or particles to moles, you can use your map as well. Uh, recap here, particles just means anything that is an individual. So the individual atoms, maybe like an iron atom, or individual molecules like carbon dioxide, or formula units, something like sodium chloride. But those little pieces, we can use this map. Once we start jumping into each individual problem, I think you'll realize the power of the map. So let's get started. So if we take a look at our very first problem, it says, how many grams is five moles of oxygen? So first of all, we want to look at what we're given. We have, or we know that we have five moles of oxygen, and we want to know how many grams of oxygen would that be? In order to do a problem, you need to know what you have and where you need to go. <clears throat> so in this case, since you're starting with moles of oxygen, you're going to want to start on your map on Mole Island. Then, since you are converting to grams of oxygen, remember mass island is grams, we're going to take our path from mole island to mass island, and we're going to follow that path. Because we're using that path, we are going to use this conversion factor. And all that conversion factor is, is allowing us to be able to do the conversion, and it tells us what to do. So let's go ahead and fill that out and figure out what all this stuff means. First of all, molar mass is simply the mass from the periodic table, all right? So for example, if you have O2, which is oxygen, and we're looking for the molar mass of oxygen, O2 on the periodic table would just be oxygen plus oxygen, which is 16 grams plus 16 grams. So the total mass or molar mass of oxygen for this specific problem would be 32 grams. If you needed the molar mass of a different problem and it ended up being chlorine gas, Cl2, you would put chlorine plus chlorine. If you needed the mass of water, H2O, it would be two hydrogens plus one oxygen. But the masses off the periodic table give you the molar mass. All right, let's set up the problem using the mole map. So if we start with what we're given, we have five moles of oxygen. By the way, MOL is the shorthand form for moles. Not much of a shortening, but that is what it is in chemistry, just so you know. But since we are going to be using this part of our map, we want to put molar mass over one mole. As we already know, the molar mass of oxygen, which goes on top, is 32 grams of oxygen. Again, because it says molar mass put on top, we're doing the molar mass specifically for oxygen. And then on the bottom, it says to put one mole. And since we're talking about oxygen, we'll put one mole of oxygen. That is now officially the setup for the problem. Now, the reason that this works is because the map automatically does something that we need to count on. We need to get rid of and cancel out the units of moles so that we can end up on top with the thing we're trying to solve for, which is grams of oxygen. So, by setting up the problem as the map states, we can get to the units we need to go. So the only thing we have to do now is finish the problem mathematically and that's straightforward. You always take the first number, multiply it by the top number, and divide by the bottom number. That is 5 times 32 which is on top divided by 1. And the answer you end up getting is about 160 grams of oxygen. So we converted from moles of oxygen all the way to grams of oxygen using our mole map. All right. As we go further with more explanations, I think this will become clearer and clearer. But the big points here 
is that molar mass is just the mass in grams off the periodic table, and you plug that into your problem, either the top or bottom, depending on which arrow you're using. In this case, we use the bottom arrow to go from moles to mass. All right, ChemFam, our next problem is going to be how many moles of H2O are in 25 grams. Another way to say that, and if you didn't notice on the last problem, we had two problems, but it's really the same problem, said slightly different. This is convert 25 grams into moles. So either one is really asking us to do the same exact thing. All right, so we know that we have 25 grams of H2O. Okay, and we want to find out how many moles of H2O that is. All right, well, let's do that. If we look on our mole map, first of all, where would we be starting on our mole map? We'd be starting at grams, and grams is, of course, on Mass Island, right here, grams. So if we're going to go from Mass Island to Mole Island, we are going to follow this top arrow and use this conversion factor of one mole over molar mass. Now remember, what does molar mass mean? It just means the mass off the periodic table. And since we have water, H2O, it's going to be two hydrogens plus one oxygen. Well, each hydrogen is 1.01, and oxygen is 16 grams according to periodic table. Add that up, and that is 18.02 grams. So that is the molar mass of water. All right, so let's start our problem. I have 25 grams of H2O. That's what's given to me. I'm going to use this conversion factor to get there. So I'm going to put one mole on top, just like it says. And since I'm talking about H2O, I'm going to put H2O. Again, remember, MOL, mole, is short for moles. And then on the bottom, I'm going to put the molar mass. And that we already figured out by just adding up off the periodic table is 18.02 grams of H2O. Now again, watch what happens. Because I used the mole map, the grams of H2O on top and bottom cancel out because something in the numerator and denominator automatically cancel out, right? It's like having over one here. So now that they cancel out, I'm left with only units of moles of H2O. Moles of H2O. So now all I need to do is figure out what this math problem is. So let's just do our math. Remember, you take the first number, multiply by the top number, divided by the bottom number. So this would be 25 times 1 divided by 18.02. And when you do that, you divide by the bottom number, you end up getting 1.39 moles of H2O. And again, it was simply by knowing that we started at Mass Island, going to Mole Island, using the top arrow to get us there, and using this conversion factor to do it. If we look at our next problem, we have 8 moles of something, helium gas, and helium is a gas that can take up a certain amount of volume, and if we want to convert that to liters, that's really liters of helium. Now to do that, we are going to go from moles on the mole map to volume because volume is measured in liters. And again, the reason that this works uh, is because of something that we'll learn in the gas laws unit. But for right now, the conversion to use a gas at STP, standard temperature and pressure, we can use these conversions. So to do that, to go from mole island to volume island, we are going to use this conversion right here. Now let's do it. This one's a lot more straightforward. Let's write down what we have, 8 moles of helium, and looking at the conversion factor that we chose, this one over here, we put 22.4 liters up on top and 1 mole on the bottom. Since we're talking about helium, we can label both with helium. But look what happens. Moles of helium naturally cancel out, and you're left with liters of helium, which is what we were looking for for volume. So all we have to do now is do our math, which is 8 times the top number, 22.4, divided by 1. And 8 times 22.4 divided by 1 is 179.2 liters.
There you go. Simple as that. To go from moles to volume, we just use our mole map to get there. Now I think we're picking up speed, so let's take a look. I've got 360.5 liters of hydrogen gas. So that is given to me. I always have to start with the number, and I need to go somewhere. In this case, they want to know how many moles that is equal to. So to do that, I'm going to say that I started at liters, so that's volume island, and I'm going to end in moles, which is mole island. So I'm going to take that arrow down and use this conversion factor right here that's given to me. So simple as that. Unlike mass, where I have to figure out something with the molar mass and the periodic table, this one, the numbers are already given to me. So this is much more straightforward. I'm going to take the number I'm given. I always have to start with the number in a math problem. And now I'm going to use the arrow to get me to moles. It says to put one mole on top. So I'm going to put one mole shorthand, M-O-L, and put hydrogen there. On the bottom, it says to put 22.4 liters, because for every one mole of hydrogen at STP, there's 22.4 liters. And there we go. I now have my conversion. Remember, it automatically cancels out the units we don't want and gives us the units that we are looking for. So in the end, our answer will be in moles of hydrogen gas. And if I multiply the first number times the top number divided by the bottom number, and again, that would be 360.5 times the top number 1 divided by the bottom number, 22.4, my answer ends up coming to 16.09 moles of hydrogen. There you go, just by using the mole map. Now we're feeling really good here. All we have to do is look at particles. Remember, particles include atoms, molecules, or formula units, really just pieces of uh, different objects. And if we want to find those pieces, we see a number we're already familiar with, and that's Avogadro's number. That's what the mole represents. So it's no surprise that that's going to come into play in the conversions. But let's look at our example problem to see where we can go from there. All right, it says to convert... 4.5 moles of sodium chloride into formula units. So I have moles of sodium chloride, and I need to convert it into formula units. So this is where you can write Fu for formula units and NaCl for sodium chloride. So if I'm in moles, I start at mole island, and you guessed it, if I'm going to formula units, I have to end at particle island, which is right there. So to do that, I'm going to follow this bottom arrow and use this conversion factor right here. Easy enough, it just puts Avogadro's number at the top, which means I'm going to have a simple multiplication problem. Well, let's try it out. I'm going to write out the number I'm given, 4.5 moles of sodium chloride. And now I'm going to multiply it by this conversion factor, 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. And this is formula units, so that's FUs of sodium chloride. Sorry, I got a little short on space there. And on the bottom is one mole of sodium chloride. What this really means is that for every one mole of sodium chloride, which is right here, okay, there is that many particles, 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. Now throw that in your calculator, and what you end up getting for an answer is 4.5 times 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd divided by 1 mole, right? We multiply the top, divide by the bottom, and the answer you end up getting is about 2.7 times 10 to the 24th formula units of NaCl. Is that a huge number? Absolutely. But should it be? Yes. If you have 4.5 moles, you basically have 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd times four. It should stay still a huge number. That's a lot of different pieces or formula units of that ionic compound sodium chloride. Okay, ChemFam, last but certainly not least, we have 5,897,000 atoms of iron, and we want to convert that into moles. So we're starting with atoms, which is particles, we're going to moles, which is mole island. So that means we must be using our particle to mole bridge. So we're going to use this top one right here. Can you do it? Maybe pause the video and try it on your own to see if you can do it. 
But I'm going to take our number, 5,897,000. Remember, you always have to start with the number you're given, and that's Adams. Okay. And now I'm going to use my conversion factor. It says to put one mole on top. I'm trusting the map. That's going to help me cancel out proper units. On the bottom, it says to put 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. And, and particles stands for either atoms, molecules, or formula units. Take a look at the units. Iron atoms are going to cancel out. You're left with moles of iron on top. So this becomes a math problem of 5,897,000 times 1, and always divide by the bottom, divided by 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. What you end up getting for an answer is a pretty darn small number. The answer ends up becoming... Uh, 9.8 times 10 to the negative 18th moles of iron, all right? When you're using those big numbers, like 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd, make sure you are putting them in your calculator right. I'll link a video that in the class schedule that shows how to put it in with a second E function on your TI calculators if you use that, all right? Thanks for following along, ChemFam, and hopefully this is a good tutorial and help for you.